Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the road podcast presented by DJ <laughs> City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We also got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What is good? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. We have associate producer in the building. <laughs> Titles. <Nudia. laughs> Titles. Yes, yes, yes. Nudia. And we are actually celebrating our four year anniversary. Man. There we go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Guys. Four years. That's crazy. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Four years thunk doing this shit. We <laughs> were just, we just talking about when it all kind of like came as an idea, right? That was a week after the um the shooting out here. Yeah. In your head, you came up with it, right? <laughs> no, in my head, I had an idea that I wanted to do with him. Yeah. But then there was when I told you about it, you're like, oh, I want to do one too, and I was like, I'll help you with yours. And then you're like, let's just do one together. And I was like, oh, okay. And then we're so like, Jamie, it was Jamie's idea. Mastermind. It was never Jamie's idea. <laughs> and you know then what I mean? Two, two it's later. ridiculous for him to even think it was. You know what? Idea. It, was, it was a vision. I woke up. It was cold sweat. No, no. It, was, well, it, was, it wasn't my idea. Jamie was still doing his sneaker blog. Yeah. At the time. Yeah, I was doing a sneaker blog. But the thing is. But you he just had, moved to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking three, well, five, whenever the, the shooting was. I moved the day of. But you had the idea of the DJ podcast, and it was your idea that you wanted to do one. Yeah. And then we just brought these two along. We just said, show yeah. up. <laughs> we put a microphone in their face. And well, when I was, in the, I was at the office at the time, it was like, yo, you want to do the podcast? He was, never was already I was working. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Fuck it. Right. Yeah. The funny <laughs> thing is, you, you were telling me later that Nudie was actually at <laughs> the same and time. And I didn't even remember that. I was there that yeah. night. That's when I yeah. met her. And I didn't want to it go was by meant myself. Because after the shooting, it was just like a weird energy. He told, it all ha- this all happened because he said, Yo, come with me because I'm scared. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, cool. I, I, did, scared, I didn't want to go scared to DJ because of the shooting. Yeah, because it was after. It was, after yeah, it was, shoot, it like, was that night. It, it, was was the week, it was a week after. Oh, a week after. And I was just like, Bro, I don't want to go by myself. This is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's going to be like. But the problem is, is that they have a balcony. They're known for this balcony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you look over the balcony, it literally looks over. The area that was yeah that was the massacre at, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it was like really cryptic being there. Yeah, and like the staff was on edge. It felt like inappropriate to really go to out and celebrate time. and yeah, to party man. and shit. It was yeah. like a weird energy and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, I bumped into him. You know, I I felt like he had a knowledge of podcasts and video and audio, and I was wrong. You know, I'm terrible. <laughs> wrong. All wrong. That's why I initially he said like, you. well, that's he why I was like. In my, in my head, I was like, look, I've been wanting to do a podcast, like I told you guys, since 2012. Yeah. yeah. When did we link up? 2017? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been wanting to do a podcast since 2012. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I was actually doing it by myself. So uh-huh. like, you, you know, DJ City's, uh, one of their co-owners and co-founders is Quickie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He was actually the first person I interviewed. Oh, wow. So oh, I, shit. I never knew this. Yeah. So I actually was in LA and I had one of those. What is the mic that I have? The uh, uh, the, the blue. The blue. They call the, the Yeti. The Yeti, Yeti mic. Yeti, yeah. I had a Yeti mic and I interviewed him for like maybe an hour and a half or two uh-huh. hours. You still have that footage? I think I still have it somewhere. Oh, and we're going to play it right now. For no, you we guys. don't. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> that, so it's about us. It's not about, <laughs> it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about cooking. I would solo, like to hear that footage. Solo though. podcast. <laughs> nah. No, no, but I, I did interview him in 2012. I and, remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, I we talked, and it just didn't like. I was kind of like, oh man, I can't do this alone. Like, yeah, it was just a, a bunch of shit to do alone. I remember you was buying like all this equipment. Yeah, yeah. You, was, you never used it. It, it was, was a while before you eventually started using it. Yeah, it's funny when I talked to Quickie like later, maybe like two years ago. He was like, imagine if you actually kept going with the podcast in 2012. He's right. like, you'd probably be one of the bigger podcasts now because you would have been the first. You've been 10 years in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even crazy. even back then, I was still inspired by Cypher Sounds. Yeah. Um, with a one up one app Yeah. Rosenberg. And then even Bill Burr at the time. Yeah, he had, he had his. Mm-hmm. So I was inspired by those two. I was like, oh, man, Bill Burr podcast. He does it by himself. And then one yeah. app it's like we never heard a podcast or we never heard anything that talked about hip hop, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially like, and it was interviewing the '90s mm-hmm. artists, and yeah. we were hearing like the inside stories from all yeah. these '90s the, the dudes, the artists, producers from back in the days. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, "Yo, imagine if I did this with DJs and like the DJ industry." Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's why I was like, "Yo, let me get Quickie in DJ City because it's like such at that time, especially it was such an important MP3 uh, MP3 pool, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. DJ pool for everyone and stuff." 
Damn, um, man. I kind of yeah. do want to hear that footage. I ain't going to lie. I Just to I, see what the, the content was I mean, in 2012. Was, you know I'm going to look for it. Maybe we play like a little snippet if I can find something, but yeah. I, I don't even know if I can find that shit, Damn. To, to be honest with you. But it's a, it's a lot of work. That's why, like, when I was listening... Just because, like, again, I went to school, you know, like, I've, you know, I've, like, won awards, but it took me a lot of work and, like, seven years. Putting on an audio show is really difficult. And especially, like, you have five mics, five different volumes. Like, people may not know, but it, it's a lot that yeah. goes into it. Yeah. And especially the way you guys do it, because you guys have the video aspect, like, mm -hmm. you know. Which is really, like, I think it was, like, a slow learn and shit like that. Oh, no, yeah. it began just posting the, the cover. Yeah. And then just the description, and now it's like audio snippet videos, and yeah. it's like a whole. Even even still, like we're, I'm still behind on video clips for for social media because it's just so many moving pieces. There's artwork. YouTube, yeah. yeah. Even when Nudia came through and she like uh, she actually helped put together the best of episodes and whatnot. Yeah. You know, you realize that how much work it was, and even still, like. We had to, you know, Jamie was walking her through. We we was all work, working together. There's yeah. a lot of communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even now we have like yeah. meetings an hour and a half just on brainstorming ideas for clips or whatever, mm -hmm. audio snippets and, and all that good shit. So yeah, man, it's a lot of work. Man, motherfuckers hit me up. They're like, "Yo, I'm gonna start a podcast too," God and I'm you. like, "Yo, like, <laughs> God bless you." I'm just like, "Yo, yeah, do that shit," you know. Yeah. But it's like that's a lot of work. You know, and I think one of the hardest things is actually getting everyone communicating to everybody and get, having everyone come mm -hmm. and like, you know, getting everyone here yeah. Yeah. in the right spot. And especially like, you know, it, it's been especially last year was rough. Oh, last year was yeah. yeah, that shit. That shit really tested us. But I mean, you know, it, it's a lot of work and it's like it feels like it's kind of moving, you know, together and it's evolving. And I like I where it's going. Yeah, yeah. I like mm -hmm. uh you know, having Nudia involved. I know we could all talk about how yeah. your guys' oh, lives geez. changed when oh I came God, around. It's yeah. funny because Sujit was telling me, he's like, you guys are good. He's like, but you're not great. And he's like, you know, like that missing piece. He's like, you need like a female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A woman You need voice. like a, a woman. Like, yeah, you need a female's pr perspective and you're missing that. Yeah. And I don't know if Nudie is the right female. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we're it's trying. A start, but it's she's a start. good for now. I made that joke she's before. Good. I just, everyone knows I made that punchline before you did. So she's, she's, she's good enough for ready, now. She's okay. We already she fulfills the right yeah, spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she moves the ball around. Sorry. I she wanted onion ball. rings, but I'll take I'll take the season five. Yeah, no. I'm an I'll hors d'oeuvre. I am an hors d'oeuvre, not an appetizer, Classy, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they got onion rings. I'll take oh, the season prize. <laughs> I'll take that instead. All right, man. Well, let's let's just go through these questions. Then. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> go ahead, shoot. You know what? I kind of feel like right now. I kind of feel like you know, like the ugly girl that gets brought into like the VIP tables because her friends are hot. Like, this is it. That's what this I feel like you. right now. I'm just like, yeah, guys, talk about. The four years. <laughs> and you got into the VIP section. You yeah, saw four, like, four ugly guys. Now, you, now you're disappointed. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Look, these four, God, look what's in VIP. These four ugly guys talking about their podcast. I should have just stayed at the bar. <laughs> Let me go back to the bar and get a drink. So I got a question. When I initially asked you to be a part of this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be a part of this podcast. What were your... I know... Never. I, what were There's your thoughts? never. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, guess I told you this before. I thought it was just like one episode. <laughs> I was just, I thought I was, thought I was gonna be the guest. In. Okay. I just I thought I was just gonna sit in this one this one recorded. So you didn't understand the dynamic of any of this. No, <laughs> not not at all. <laughs> it was a one off. You was just like, yo, just tell your perspective about DJing be, this and that. Be honest. And did I, you, did I you thought, even know what a podcast was? Come on, man. How <laughs> <laughs> would you fuck this? I don't ask, know. Ask no, but you, the next question. No, no, no. Oh, wait, wait. I put it as like, have you ever listened to a podcast? Prior to. Well, you used to fucking play them shits. You used to play Bill Burr at the um, office. Oh, okay, we had okay. Yeah, yeah. So you would listen. You would I'm, I'm, Yeah, I just didn't, never listened to it. I never listened to it on my own. Yes. My own time. Okay, I was okay. listening to a podcast. So in your head, no. it was probably like AM radio, right? Kind of like it that. It was just like, um, it was. Like talk radio. It was like talk radio. Yeah, yeah talk exactly. Radio. Yeah. So never had yeah. no clue of, of his commitment. Like no, didn't I didn't know, know what I was getting myself into. I thought it was just one episode. So why did you keep going? <laughs> I don't know, cause cause you know what? You, we kept recording at, at noon, and I was dead. It was like, oh, are we gonna be? You would pull him out of office. I take a break from noon. I'll, I'll do this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll take I'll, this on my lunch break. I'll record guys. this, yeah. Oh, okay. No, for real, yeah. I'm, I just drag never into yeah, shit. Yeah, you drag them into it. <laughs> you know, I was wondering how you got involved. I'm not even yeah. lying. And it somehow like, works dude, out, right? Me now. and Never didn't even know each other. We yeah. met the first. Yeah, we met that first day. The first we, recording. We recorded, this yeah. when we first ever spoke yeah, to each other. Yeah, don't front. Don't yeah. front. You didn't like He him. hated me. Yeah. You know why? I do not hate you. You know why, though? I would make. He was like too comfortable and joking and shit. I was like, yo, I don't know this dude to be joking like that. He would talk shit to like Never. I would talk shit to a lot of people. Yeah, but he would talk shit to Never. Yeah. And you just don't like, like on some like. Like, we're all friends. Like, they've been knowing like, each you other. Don't, you don't know like, me like that to be joking no, like that. He was. Yeah. He thought he was back at Riff with, like, all yeah. the co-workers. Yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. I was, like, shooting talking shit. Talking shit. But you, like, kind of, like, you know, you I mean, seasoned you, vet. Yeah. Like, exactly, yeah. You know? I, gotta, yeah, I, I don't know this. I don't he wanted some guys. respect. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. just, like, in a friendly matter, but I was talking a lot of shit. Yeah. So I had to. Shit. I had to learn. I had to learn. I can't deny that. He had to get respect. Those first few episodes were rough for Jamie, though. Like, because... Like even you, Crooked. Like everyone was just shitting on him. I oh feel. no, it wasn't a few episodes. Well, the, it was pro- the first problem it was like years. a year. It was like the first year. Or two. The problem is Jamie. Like he talks like he knows. Like in the beginning, he was talking like he knew what the fuck he was talking about, mm-hmm. and he was just entering a, a, like this new, new industry. World. Yeah. So like we not I'm not gonna sit here and let this motherfucker say a bunch of shit that he don't know what he's talking about. Like, I may have seen like I've, I've been headlining for years. But do you realize that, right? Yeah. You realize you sound crazy sometimes, like <laughs> yeah. back in the day. But right? Yeah. That's a delusional thing that a lot of people have. Because people are like yo, you don't you don't get on Jamie like you do like you did before, right? Because he's come he's come a, he's come a long way. Yeah. But he I'm knows he knows now when you don't know. I was shit. a kid though. I was 27 at the time. I mean, that's I right. mean that you're not a kid. <laughs> that was, that's, you don't know better. It was like four years ago, though. Man. You don't know better. You don't <laughs> you know better. You think you know. Man. You, you don't know better. You think you know everything. Just because you've done a little bit, you feel like you've nah, the world. Nah, it's because he had like, he was like insta-famous back in that day. I wasn't insta-famous. He was. He kind of like, was. Yeah, yeah he I was wasn't. on it. Jamie was, Jamie he, he was still G'd popping in the, the, He was G'd up in the sneakers. Yes, shit. yes. Yeah. I was popping in the sneakers. Right. Okay. Give me more respect than that. Yeah. But. And, yeah. that, and that whole world is full of shit. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 That whole world, uh, that whole sneaker world, the majority of the motherfuckers in the sneaker world full yeah, of shit. Yeah, but I come from the- I The come resellers, from the, those resellers. I, co- I come from a different cloth. Respect my wait, name. I come wait, from Riff you, LA. They God, talk a lot. They talk Son, a lot. You're going to give me my respect because I'm from Riff LA. I'm not from the new Son, way. those like those kind of those weird, those weirdo motherfuckers <laughs> that like cloud chase. Oh, no, they, yeah. That's a different one. And they do like skits and shit. The like, high beast. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not about that. But come on. <laughs> they're all full of shit. Oh, no, no. I yeah, said that. Yeah. I'm not one of those though. So you came from came that, from that world, world, and then he came yeah. to this world, which is the realest. We're the realest motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> He's so thorough. <laughs> now I tell motherfuckers like we're not the best DJs, right? <laughs> no, uh-huh. we're, we're definitely not the smartest DJs. Mm-hmm. We're not the wokest DJs, but we're the realest. I feel like. Yeah, I can attest to that. You, you, yeah, you definitely put me in my place and taught me a lot of new shit that I right. didn't know about. Be yeah. honest, yeah, being honest with yourself and stuff like that. Accountability. Yeah. The, yeah, we've been. We, it's been a long trip here. It was so difficult working with him <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, Yo, do you remember? Like, it was so difficult. Yeah, 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 like, yeah please. Do you teach, don't review this. Teaching trip. him like audio, like going through audio, going through video, like just teaching him, like even just like communication and like accountability and response and all of this shit. It was like you gotta understand. You don't even know. I know now. I know now. <laughs> How many times have I made you cry? Uh, at when least you four told times. me that he used to cry, that made me so yeah. Because you get you get like it was it was it reminded me when I was playing sports, and the <laughs> coach would yell at you, and it'll, it'll get you frustrated because you you try so hard and it's you the, still fucked it's up. It's to break you down to build the, you up. Dude. Yes, is that shit? So it wasn't. I knew it wasn't malicious from you. I know it was like coming from a, a good place. <laughs> but it was, it was. Uh, kid, I have a question though. Would you feel bad when Jamie would cry? No, no. <laughs> because you know why? You know why? Bad? You know what those tears are? <laughs> of joy. No, 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 no. <laughs> growing, you know what those tears are? Growing. No, what no, is no. It? I'm gonna tell you something. When you work for somebody, right? Uh huh. This is the thing. When you work for somebody, you become really good at like kind of dismissing and putting the blame on other shit. Mm-hmm. Right, you're not very accountable when you work from somebody. A lot of people aren't, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like yo, you can blame a whole bunch of shit. You can blame the manager. You can blame this person. You can blame a whole bunch of things, right? Yeah. When you work for yourself, there's nobody fucking shit up except the person in the mirror, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, 
So the thing is, is that when you start working for yourself, right, or you work with a partner, right, mm-hmm. if you treat your partner like the owner of the business or manager and you lie to them or you're dismissive or you deflect or you have no accountability, you're not being a good partner. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Mm-mm. Right. So in this case, sometimes the person needs to realize if I if if I'm if I'm bullshitting the person I'm working with. I'm making their job and their life harder, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm lying to them, I'm not I'm I'm giving I'm making them do my work. Mm-hmm. So what kind of a teammate or what kind of a partner am I being? Yeah. And sometimes you don't realize it. And when I made him, when I kind of put it on the table, like yo, you're doing this, you're doing this, and maybe he didn't realize it. When he realizes it, there's a bit of shame. There's a bit of, right? Yeah. And there's what a kind of thing like, yo, you kind of think like, damn, man, why am I moving like this? I could do I, better. I could do better. Yeah. 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 And that's that's exactly but what I'm, I'm good at doing. I'm really good. At, at, I'm making people at, cry. Well, I'm, look. <laughs> you Korean, delegating? I was like, raised by a Korean dude. single mother. Aww. She's really good at like putting <laughs> guilt on me <laughs> to be better. So like, I'm really good at putting guilt on motherfuckers but, to make them better. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. It reminded me of my coaches. Like he'll put me in my place, and yeah, tears of frustration yeah. that you should do better. It wasn't no malicious shit. But I shit. did feel like when I first... I think people think like <laughs> no. if you say, "Yo, you make somebody cry," you they feel like, "Oh, you're a bad person." No, it was a it was coming from a good place. Of like, "Yo, you got to get your shit together because this can be the biggest shit you can do, and you're not taking care of it." But I did feel like when the first couple conversations I had with Crooked, and he talked about bringing me on, like. He, I feel like he always thought I was gonna cry because he always kind of like was very like, and I'm just like, damn, what is, what had you guys gone through? The the, the thing is like, <laughs> the thing is when you first got on, right? Stop the script. When games. we have when we have meetings like about work, I focus on the work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then Nudie wants to like go through a couple minutes of pleasantries, right? Mm-hmm. She wants to like throw in a little pleasantries here and there. How you doing? Oh, I saw you here. Wait. I saw you. I'm just like, yo, fuck all that. Let's focus dude, on the dude, he made you cry I also? Hi. No, he didn't make me cry. No. <laughs> not yet. But I made you look in the mirror for a couple of times and yeah. just be like, yo, I gotta <laughs> no, get my shit together. No, you did not. No, you did not. You can be better, Nudia. You know what's funny is that- Why, why, did, I, why did I call him to get, <laughs> get my parents shit. to lava? Yo, chill, chill. <laughs> no, like I, did, I did OD though. on them that, the, like last week or something. It's fine. And you, right, you know what's- I got a funny story about that. About- Long story short, I met her with Alexa the door girl, and she was just like, she listened to the podcast. Alexa the door girl from Lava. From Lava. Uh, what she She's think? like, why you made such a big deal out of that shit? Why'd you, why'd you make, <laughs> she's like, I could have just put her name on for Saturday. Like, why you, why you, why'd you fuck with her? Like, that poor girl and her parents. Why did you fuck with her? Uh, but James understood. James knows what I'm talking about. Of course yeah. he did. And, she, 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 and Alexa understands later, but yeah. you know, she was on your side. You know, y'all, y'all all shout out to Alexa. Alexa. Shout out to Alexa. Y'all thanks, all stick to thanks, y'all stick James together. So. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking <laughs> about I always drag you into shit, right? Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So wait, at some point, were you like, why is he keep calling me to do these? Recordings? I mean, after no, this was like the first time it was like I was new to it. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. yeah. And then after a while, I was just like, oh, we're gonna do this every week, and from there, it was just like, all right, cool, let's do it. Because we did this for a year. Yeah, without yeah. getting any type of sponsorship money or any type of funding, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you guys were cool with that. Yeah, yeah. It was it, honestly, like it was that. a it was a cool journey. Like even the first time we took the road trip to LA, yeah, it was like on our own dime, and yeah. we just made it happen. And it was just a dope experience. When we, I think we had Stone and Graham on, right? Yeah, during the holidays. Oh yeah, that was the first. That was that was, was it? technically not the first. Uh, nah, what was the? F- that what was, was in the. the f- that's that. That was in the first. Uh, that was the first time we traveled. I mean, yeah, kind of. But kinda. the real, real one was with Cipher Sounds, Rock the Con, Spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the real first trip, and that was even on our own dime. We and had that to was at the Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. So yeah, but it, the first trip to uh to, with Stone Rock and Graham, I think we were just going. We were there for uh for scam holiday party. Yeah, holiday yeah. party and shit. But that was in the first one. Well, well, what, what about you, D? What it. What did you did you know uh, what you getting into? Did you understand what the fuck? I this understood was? it, but I was really nervous because I'm naturally quiet. Yeah. So it, it was like for me, I'm like, damn, what kind of value am I going to add to this? Because I know myself. I know I'm quiet. I'm really soft spoken. And to be honest with you, to be completely transparent, like over the last four years, this has really helped me with public speaking, and it's helped me like even being on the mic in the club, like everything that we do. Like I just I'm so much more comfortable with just talking. Wow. Like even like just meeting people and being personable. I didn't know it's that. helped me in a lot of ways, man. So before I just was just very quiet, kind of like to myself, and I'm like, damn, like 
how is this going to translate to a podcast? You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, I've this like even after the um the pandemic, like this last year is probably the most comfortable I've ever been in the four years of being on the podcast. Like now I feel like I know my lane. Yeah, yeah. I know my voice on the podcast. Right. Like before I I always felt like I wasn't sure of myself. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I didn't really know where I fit in. Because you, you have a very dominating personality. Neville is very, very knowledgeable. Jamie's funny. I didn't really know where I fit in. Jamie's what? He's funny. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. People love me. So well, yeah. you, you know what you are. You're, what? you're the most, you're the more rational, right? Sensible yeah. person, yeah. right? <laughs> and the most, probably the most, like, real honest person that when he lives through shit, like his ass fi- being fixed and whatever, <laughs> it, 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 he's like that, that lived, dude. That lived he, for so long. He's but open. he brings he's that to the table. I mean, he, he's yeah. one of the more transparent. Yeah, he has. Yeah. That's what I meant to say, yes. transparent. Yeah, yeah he talked about. But yeah, I was, to, to answer the question, I was nervous. I was yeah. just like, damn, man, like, what am I going to bring? Yeah. You know? There were some was episodes cool. that would be like, yo, where's D-Miles? <laughs> Why is he so quiet? Yeah. Like, people would comment that. I just... Didn't really know where I fit in a lot of times, but over the last year, I feel like I've gotten better, and it's translated into other areas of my life, so I'm, like, super grateful for this shit, man. There was a couple of times where you wanted to, to leave, right? Yeah, because I just, I was probably going through something personal, or I just was frustrated, or, you know, obviously during the pandemic, we were all having our moments. Yeah, I think yeah. that was And I was just time. very, we, didn't, we wasn't seeing eye to eye, maybe, and I just was checked out mentally, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And all those things played a role in the media, it's like, damn, I don't know, like, if this is for me sometimes, but I'm glad like, you know, Crooked, we had conversations and you like checked me on things and all those things were beneficial. And I'm grateful for that shit to even have someone that's willing to like care enough about me to check me on shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if you didn't care, you would just say nothing. It's exhausting. Honestly. (laughs) Yeah. Just just like managing off, off three of you, now four of you. It's like, (laughs) I know when I talk to D, I gotta make a lot of sports references. Yeah. And he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'd be, ex- I be explaining shit to him. Scotty Pippen, let And then I'm just down. like, yeah, I'm just like, oh, let me bring this sports thing that I know. And I'll be like, yeah. oh. And then the he's like, oh, I get, it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But you he's get like, it after yeah. the sports reference. He'll like right? reference like Phil Jackson and like yeah. Jordan and Pippen. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, you don't watch shit in sports. <laughs> Well, because I asked them, I was like, how did you, I I forgot who I asked. I was like, what did you tell them when you like, it was like, oh, Nudia is just going to come in and be with us. I was like, did you just even tell them? Or because I showed up and they both like looked confused for a minute. Like the first. No, we had a conversation, right? Didn't we have a conversation? I'm pretty sure we did. But it, was, yeah. it wasn't like yeah. permanent. It was like, oh yeah, by the way, we do this one. <laughs> Obviously, we can tell who was shocked. <laughs> but it was cool. Like it was, it was like, yo, like. We always like in the grants, like that would be cool to have a female or a, a woman uh, point of view, right? And point of reference to have for different shit. <laughs> that was like, I didn't say that. that. I didn't what say do you anything. bring to the table, Nudia? <laughs> <laughs> well, ultimately, I was like, you know, when, when she contacted us, she was like, you know, or she contacted Jamie. She's yeah. like, you guys should do a best of when we took that month yeah. off in mm-hmm. September. And I was like, yo. You know, that Kirk said, Kirk said, well, tell her to do it. <laughs> well, I offered to help. And I, well, offered, I, I, yeah, I said I this. Sure. I said, look, if she, that's a great idea. You know, I, I think we should put it together. But let's see what she's capable of. Mm-hmm. Like, as, as far as the technical side of it. Yeah. And she's she's she actually edits audio. She she knows some basics in video. And Jamie and I showed her a little bit more in video. And it's it's just one of those things where, like, I don't meet a lot of. DJs, right, who have ideas like that and share them with us and are willing to execute. Right. So Mm -hmm. if she's willing to execute this, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And she executed it. And then the only thing is that we have to make ourselves available to help her along the way. Mm -hmm. So she's not alone in doing it. And then we also set the standard for how it's supposed to look and how it's supposed to sound. Mm -hmm. You know, so obviously, you know, she was able to do the first best of. And I was like, all right, let me see how she does on the second one. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take a, a small step back. And Jamie was overseeing a little bit. Of, and then it went through. And I said, you know what? Someone who's willing to go this far and do all of this and not necessarily, quote, unquote, get paid yet. Mm-hmm. Um, that's someone I would invest in further. And I think she can bring something to the podcast. Right. Especially in working with her. Because mm-hmm. it's not easy working with me. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Because I have a, a certain standard for for work ethic and mm-hmm. and what I what I want in the end product, right? Mm-hmm. And she was and she was coming through. Do you understand? So like, that's why we brought you on. And you know? hundreds of ideas that she brings to the table all the time, like right. random shit. Like um, and wait, wait, and she has a radio background, right? And yeah. with her mm-hmm. radio background, she can teach us a lot. And then I was like, and she was already teaching us shit that I didn't know, like the best of. Mm -hmm. And she brought up some other ideas, even, you know, some of the topics and the themes that she has for some of our future episodes that are going to kind of come out. You know, like I thought it was a good structure. She has this radio structure. How how many years have you been in radio? Eight years or plus? Seven. Yeah. She's bringing this knowledge that I'm going to learn from. And I was like, yo, this is perfect. I get to learn something new. And, uh, you know, what she's going to bring the structure and I think it'll help everything. Yeah. You know, it's one of the things that I think we were in the end missing mm-hmm. because honestly, what I think this could even turn into if it was possible to evolve it would be like a morning show or something like that. Right. If yeah. we were to get older, wake up every morning and do a show, who knows? We could get better in the next two, three years, five years exactly. where mm-hmm. it could turn into something like that. But for what I've what I've understood Especially when I see the long, when I see people's careers like a, a Charlemagne or anybody yeah. in radio or in you know mm-hmm. in the music industry or in the nightlife industry, it takes time to like get better at what you do. Yeah. Cause so even, what, you know where like you said where we are now after four years, I feel like I'm a better interviewer. I feel yeah. like I feel like you know I'm better at collecting my thoughts. I feel mm-hmm. I feel like everyone's better at expressing themselves and and speaking and and doing everything. Yeah. D mm-hmm. like, you know, like some of the shit you've shared on on our past episodes is like is great. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't get that from anybody. Yeah, you know, you're so transparent about things, even even things that you're struggling with mm-hmm. in your career or personal life. Sometimes, yeah. you know, and it's it really serves as a form of therapy. Yeah, and you honestly, you know, I, there's a lot of DJs who hit me up and maybe hit all of you guys up, and they they let you know, like, yo, that yeah. shit was real, and like, yeah. mm-hmm. nobody speaks like that. Yeah, and that's yeah. the one thing I can say, like, that's why I said, like, we are, I, we we are the realest, and I don't mean like, yo, like, you know, group home, we're the yeah. realest kind of shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we we like, I, I feel, I feel like any other DJ who's bigger, who's more famous, cannot be that honest. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they be risking they, they too much. Protect the brand. Yeah, they got to protect their brand, and yeah. honestly. The more high profile a DJ is, the more full of shit they have to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It goes with any artist or anybody in Mm -hmm. the industry. The higher up they are, the more full of shit they are on the mic. Pause. You know? So, like, we're in a position where we can navigate through our careers and speak as transparently as we can. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So, uh, knock on wood, you know? Yeah, and we also give the platform to other DJs that have gone through shit. Yeah. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we had Bonix, and that was such a big... Turn out that people love giving us. I the, got mad DMs about him. Yeah, yeah. How about how real that conversation was and the things he went through with his health and like. Yeah. yeah people can really relate to that, man. Yeah. Like that 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 episode is one of my favorites that we've done because it's just jam packed and it's really fucking honest about shit. And it goes back to like a rock the con episode as well. One of the early ones, he was just honest about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that rock the con that that rock the con episode. He puts everything out on the table. Mm-hmm. He's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like about I, the cub. and it was too honest that we had to cut some things out because we like we got to yeah, protect I, them a little bit. We we yeah. edit certain shit out, and I was like, I was telling you even when, when the Rathacon, I'm like, yo, you got to take that shit out because that's a, yeah, because yeah. I can't have my man out there like yeah, that, and it was just like, like I can't have everything <laughs> out. <laughs> and then, and then he, he didn't mind it. That's the thing. He goes, I don't give a fuck. I spoke everything, but it was just like. <laughs> Okay, we got it. And then we we still do that to, to some other episodes where, like, okay, we yeah. might have to take that out, take that out. I think that's the mm-hmm. one reason why DJs are willing, some DJs are willing to come on this podcast because they know in the end we're not trying to, like, embarrass them or no, frame no, no, them no, no, or no. shit. We're just yeah. trying to get the real story out. Yeah. And and w- what really happened and shit. But yeah, speaking man. of episodes, what are y'all favorite guests or episodes or conversations <sighs> that we've had? I'll be honest, man. My favorite, it was a few, but. When we went to Miami, bro, yeah, I had an amazing time. When we talked to Mauricio, yeah, yeah. When we talked to um Jessica, who she was dope, and then um fuck, he just uh, I can't get my thoughts together. The, uh, Silent Addy, Silent Bill Spector, Bill Spector. Spector. Laz. Laz, Laz. I was thinking about Laz, man. Laz was amazing. Laz is yeah. amazing. He was funny. He was charismatic. He talked about his family. He talked about his upbringing. Like, you know, he 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 just everything about him was so real, man. Yeah, yeah. That that, that trip to me, honestly, like if I could think about just a time that stuck out in my head with the podcast and being with everybody, it was Miami. 
It was a lot we, of fun though. Miami was yeah. No, that we was still, we still party. We had dinners. That was like, a good time, man. Yeah, that man. was our last trip, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, and we and we was like after that trip, we planned on going to like London, yeah. Yeah. Toronto, Toronto. Toronto. I mean, we had Chicago. we had we had Texas lined up the week that everything shut down. Yeah, right. man. We had to cancel and that. Then, and then pandemic happened. The pandemic yeah. hit us. And I feel like with Miami, we finally, I finally got us organized for. The out of town recordings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The road. Because, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. like mules. Because LA was rough. Like the, mm. I think I the yeah, first LA was LA rough. Was it was exhausting. It, it was, man. Yeah. And then New York was exhausting. Yeah, New York was. And We're, then I I just really? figured out Miami. I was like, we do two recordings a day, but we do nothing else. Yeah. yeah. And we just chill. Mm -hmm. And then like we get there a day early and we just do nothing. And then we and the last day we do nothing. And yeah. then we prepare. We, do, we prepare with saying? cameras, lighting, microphones. Yeah. We prepare. And those, extra those two a day was perfect because we weren't over exhausted. Yeah, yeah. You know we did I mean? one at the noon and like one at late night, yeah. and we got time to just you know. And even we, still, that was still a little. Yeah. It we was still a rush. made time to chill with the, yeah. with the guests, kind of eat with them if we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was cool. Yeah. yeah. That's but why man, I was like, was, damn, I was like, damn, I, I, we, I got this figured out for Miami. Miami was fun. It was a breeze. Yeah. And I was like, if we could get. And then I was like, "Fuck!" And but then now, the pandemic. Even pandemic. Texas, we had we had everything. We had all the equipment for Texas. Yeah, yeah. We had all the shit, microphones, and then had boom. A meet and greet lined up. Like Texas yeah, was yeah, ready. Yeah, Texas yeah, was yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we, we still got to go back. Was yeah. it? Is it tough traveling? I was gonna say because like when you travel, sometimes you get sick of people. Like, was it hard traveling together? No, 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 not really. Not really. Like, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> we all had like our separate rooms, and we were like, yeah. we didn't even travel together. Like. The first time it was just me, you, me, Jamie, and um, D. Yeah, because I think you was meeting us from somewhere. You in New York. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we got there first, yeah. So it wasn't like we was traveling together all the time. Yeah, but, but we did travel all together to Miami. But yeah, we yeah, had we had cool. like our own thing going on. Like we would cook. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, we had a huge cook, backyard. Cook for sure. <laughs> It was cool. Like I'd be chilling in the backyard. Someone would be watching a movie. Like you know, everyone was just doing their own thing a little bit. That's when Disney Plus came out. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that yeah. shit. We were watching The Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. The time machine, according to Nudia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, what, do you have a favorite episode? You, I, I'm. I when she's been day one I was, listener. I was impressed that you were telling us that you were a day one listener when we first were talking with you and working. Oh, I think because I started just shooting off like episodes, right? right to yeah. You? And she knew shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I just. Um, I think my favorite I'm not gonna lie I think the episode I remember the most because I was like literally crying like laughing by myself listening to it was Neva's episode I really? think oh, yeah 99. that one because it's like because again like a podcast I think that's maybe why some like girls hate on me because it's like when you listen to a podcast you feel like you're hanging out with the people in the room you know right. like mm -hmm. so it's like some people want to feel like they're only hanging out with you you know so when I heard that and like just Neva telling all his stories and it was just it was About like the crackhead. It was, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like what it was just like I was just crying like like by myself listening to it. I was like, this is so fucking funny. Like and so I think those are the episodes that I remember the most. They're the ones where I'm just like listening to y'all and like laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Kirk? She's so quiet over there. My favorite episodes? Fuck man, a conversation. I don't pieces. know. I'm too close to all of it. You I know. know. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm with you. I'm too close to a lot of the episodes. Um, yeah, to this day, Michael Mayetta, the Mega, Mega Man Mega episode, Man. Mm -hmm. which is like early in the first year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's like episode 22 or something. Yeah, shit. 22. I don't know. It's like that Mega Man episode when he was talking about his childhood trauma. Yo, he opened up for real, man. Yeah, like, that was that was amazing. That, to me, was, that he was that, that honest. That kind of fucked me up. Yeah. Like yeah, hearing about his childhood trauma and mm -hmm. like having music saved his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having that trauma affect the women he picked in life. Yeah. I thought it was really fucking crazy. Yeah, so man. like I don't know. That fucked me. I like I was actually almost tearing in that episode. Yeah. Cause I, I was I just wasn't ready to hear that shit. I don't think any of us were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was that that I was to this day like, that that damn, one bro. that was emotional to me because I was just like some real that know. episode felt like four hours, but it, it was mostly it was like one forty eight. I remember that, that it was long. It was that boring. shit felt like it a felt long. Dead. I remember that. Me, <laughs> me and Never were talking about after, and we were like mentally exhausted. I was draining. Yeah. It was, it was draining. really draining because <laughs> it was a lot, and it's crazy because I know Mega Man. I met him. I want to say oh six. Yeah, and I called him like a week later after that, and I was just like, "Hey, man, like I learned so much about you. I've known you for like ten years, yeah, like, yeah. just from that two hours that we spent together in the podcast. Like that shit was deep, bro. I think it was the first things that opened me up to like therapy. 
mm-hmm. where I was like, oh shit, like there's there's a connecting of the dots of yeah. when we're mm-hmm. kids and how we are now and like how we react to shit and how we just navigate through life now yeah. is really about, you know, protecting ourselves when we were when from all the trauma that we were as kids. So when I heard that I was just like, wow, therapy actually helped them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it helped them figure some shit out. And then ultimately, you know, when I went to when I did some therapy last year, that shit helped me out a lot. Yeah. And it actually yeah. put me in a way better place mm-hmm. uh, I am now. I mean, I still got a lot of work to do, but I actually have a question for you guys. Um What's well, a little bit about a throwback for for our Scissor Hands and Fat Man Scoop episode? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that was that was heated. That was yeah. actually our first year. I yeah. think that kind of blew us up though. Yeah, that Scissor Hands and because that was unexpected. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was like really episode thirty. I was surprised when I saw you guys got Fat when Man Scissor Scoop Hands on. came on and he started going at that. I was yeah. just like, oh, so shit. Scissor like, Hands. He was so passionate. So bro. Eddie McDonald hooked up Scissor Hands yeah. to be on the podcast, Bro podcast, mm-hmm. well, and he moved to Vegas for some reason, right? Uh, he, he lived out here for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a bunch of topics we were talking about and i remember before we were recording scissor hands was like yeah i want to talk about this fat man scoop shit da, 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 da. like he fucking stole whatever and i was yeah. like yo like we don't have to talk about that <laughs> yeah because i was like i don't want to get no weird shit yeah. yeah and then he fucking talked about it anyway amongst a bunch of crazier shit yeah beef has got to be over diamond or something the crazy. problem is is that some really bad business went down with be faithful the paperwork didn't go right Let's just put it that way. That's when we split from Scoop. When you look at the first vinyl pressing, it is Crooklyn Clan featuring Fat Man Scoop mm-hmm. because it was our sound. Mm-hmm. It was a three-man effort, Riz, Scissorhands, Scoop. Name a single motherfucking time you saw me, Scoop, and Riz on stage. Never. 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 But did Scoop travel the world doing that song? Of course. Does yeah. he still travel the world doing that song? Yeah. yeah. Do you think something is wrong with that? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Like, if you look up my record, Right now on Spotify, look up Be Faithful, you won't see the name Crooklyn Clan no more. You'll say what? Fat Man Scoop. Oh. Right. All right. Wow. Listen, listen to wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't be more serious with you. Money fucks shit up, makes people act out of line, straight up, makes them act like their morality just disappears right the fuck out of their body. Uh, <laughs> but basically, his story was that Fat Man Scoop was like. Taking uh, his, he, took the he was taking the Crook, Crooklyn it's Clan a, name off of the streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a and he was line. taking advantage name. of it so he could book more shows. Fat Man Scoop could book more shows. Yeah. yeah, and he was just beefing with him basically. Yeah. Now, do you guys remember that day we recorded Fat Man Scoop? I do. Well, Fat Man Scoop was like coming from Africa or like Europe or something. So he was like Europe. I yeah, think. he was in Europe. I think it was like sixteen hour flight yeah. supposedly, but he told us I'll be there tomorrow night. And then we so, sat there for fucking, what was like eight hours just sitting at the office. Waiting ho- for him. Hoping. And we didn't get no confirmation. We were just sitting there. And I think it was like, oh, you had to go work. D Miles left to go work. And then I, fam, I think he, what, he showed up like 1.30 in the morning. Dude, was it that late? Yeah. He showed That's up. It was crazy. around there, man. But it was that definitely late, man. Yo, this is how he, he was so heated about yeah. that Scissor Hands episode. Yo, he had a laptop with questions, right? Yeah. Yeah, he had his whole, he's like, yeah, what, 28, 30, 39. He, yeah, yeah. Like, he had full Yo, he, time was, he, was, he was so <laughs> tight and heated. Because of that Scissor Hands episode. Scissor's like herpes. The latest herpes flare up was about the was about the Spotify. Yeah, There's no Crooklyn Clan credit. Okay, on, so on so, so let's so let's yeah. get to that. I did not know that. Yeah. I said in the email, line it up, and I will go down to Spotify headquarters and I'll tell them to do it. That got met with I'm good. I'll do it on my own. Mm. What do you want from me? These kids don't care about something that happened in 1998. I don't think you're responsible to fix that, but you cannot tell me that these kids or people do not care about the credit. And I think okay. it matters when a kid sees Be Faithful, Fat Man Scoop, and Crooklyn Clan. Okay. And what happens with that record that doesn't have Crooklyn Clan, it is almost like rewriting history. I am in full yeah. agreement with you to the point that I went and said, I will help you. Then he tries to come back here and crucify me. That in its nature is wrong. There's a level where you got to say, you know something? I got beat up enough. I got to go. Yo, he I was, was sending like, me voice notes. He kept asking yeah. for D because D wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Was, wait, he reached out to you? Yeah, and he, he was, was the first he one. He was DMing me. And I was like, Do you know what? No. Why was he talking to you? I have no idea, bro. <laughs> he, he, but he was sending me voice notes. And I was like, he was like 
it was just all in chronological order of everything that he was breaking down everything his sister hands was saying. Yeah, yeah. and then he screen recorded and he sent it to us in the group yeah, chat. Yeah, and I was just like, yo, this is like real. Like, he's <laughs> really mad. Yeah, he's really mad. And Someone then, like, said he flew that long just to get on the episode. That was crazy. He did. Yeah. I don't think he was to clear his up. name. That was, to me, that was like the first time I was like, oh shit, we got, we kind of got something. The mm-hmm. fact that we got Fat Man Scoop and we had that thing yeah. going back and forth, I was like, we kind of blowing up a little bit after this. That was pretty <sighs> That was crazy. Because I remember, like, when I had to put that in the best of, I asked Jamie, I was like, yo, like, like, y'all were quiet. I was like, Cricket, like, looks a little tired. Like, she was <laughs> saying, like, I was like, he's like, yo, we were there for all these hours waiting I don't remember for him. that. Bro, I don't we, remember I, that I remember you closed the store, we got there. It was around six, seven o'clock. And we got there. And we, we waited just, that long? And we just <laughs> sat yeah, there. We did. And we just and I had DJ that um daylight that, daylight that afternoon, so I was like fucking out of it the whole time. Yeah, there's some right? like <laughs> never had, sleeping. And then he had <laughs> to yeah. leave. It was yeah. like yeah, two, three in the morning. He had to go to Dorsey. Fucking... Oh, you weren't there? No, no. Uh, I had to leave. I think Eddie was Eddie there. Eddie, yeah, Eddie, Eddie was, was there. there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Fat Man Scoop's a good a, a good guy though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah but like he had so much energy, and y'all looked drained. You know what? I wish we would have asked him for drops. <laughs> I know it was, but it was, it was like was so, so late. Weird. It was just like, oh fuck it, man. Yeah, we would have got some drops at least. But. Y'all got some Jesus drops. Yeah, fucking. Yeah. Drop. <laughs> Let's go, God. Let's go, God. That shit was hilarious. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh man, but I mean, it's been uh, what do you call it? Well, like I'm actually kind of curious to hear how do you guys think you've changed over the past four years from where from where you were as a DJ, as a person in 2017 when we started this shit, and where you are now. Mm-hmm. D, you're the most honest. Let me hear from you. Ooh, damn, man. Honestly, I think for me personally, I have so much more um, appreciation for my health, for being able to still DJ. I have a huge appreciation for you guys in the podcast. I think early on, I never not appreciated it, but seeing how far we've come, now I have a huge appreciation. And just like, I look forward to coming here and, and talking with you guys. You know what I'm saying? And there was probably a point where I just didn't really have that appreciation, but I've me changing has made me getting older. I don't know what it is, but I appreciate this shit so much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that, like I was saying earlier, a lot of this shit is therapy for me. So getting here and being able to talk and, and be open, this is all therapy. But before I was just like maybe caught up in just not really thinking it was a, anything. You know what I'm saying? I might have got caught up in just DJing and not even looking forward to the next week or whatever. Mm-hmm. But now everything's changed. Like I. I don't know if I'm even making sense, but a lot of shit I have into perspective now. And I, I appreciate all this shit, man. And maybe during the pandemic, I lost the appreciation. I lost the love and I was just really battling with myself if I even wanted to do it. But now like I'm really fully dedicated and I think I needed that period to to be where I'm at today. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's um, deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's deeper damn. than I thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted an honest one. <laughs> Ta-da. Yeah, you wanted it. Yeah, this guy, you guys, toes like he got a thumb up his ass, too. Like, no, I feel like you've you been expect? a superstar lately. Like, I feel like D's been, like, a superstar lately on this, these episodes. Yeah. No, I think, you know, it's, it's funny because I feel like maybe when you didn't, when you weren't into it or you didn't want to record with us or you, you maybe didn't have a quote-unquote appreciation for the podcast, mm-hmm. maybe I felt like you you felt you didn't have a voice. Yeah. You felt like you, you didn't have a part and like no one was listening, you know? Or yeah. like, and I, and I would remember, to keep, I would keep telling you like, yo, you have a voice. Mm-hmm. Like, you are important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you have, you bring shit to the table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's exactly right. Like, I felt like I just didn't have a voice. Yeah. And it was more of a reflection of how I felt about myself versus how I felt about the podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, like self projecting, right? Yeah. yeah. I do that. So a lot. I was projecting my fears or my worth on, I was bringing that to the, to the podcast mm-hmm. and it was showing, right? It was just coming out. Yeah. But now I'm like in a great mood when I show up. And, you know. You are. I just love being here, and you. I could, I could, I even like when I listen back, I'm like, damn, like I feel like I'm in a different place right now. Yeah, and I'm grateful for that shit because a year ago I wasn't in this space. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yeah, like that's to me what I've probably in the from 2017 to now. That's that's been my biggest, my biggest growth. 
We love you, D. I love y'all back. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Thani, D. And then I'm asked never. Let's go, what, what is change? He's going to be like, nothing. I'm still the same. I'm still the same. I'm still the same. Still the same. BX. Don't no, no change in the game, well, baby. Boogie, bond, boogie down. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. Actually, I ain't going to lie. When we first started recording, I used to fall asleep. Yeah, I know that. Used to, in the beginning. I know. I used to cut your camera and your motherfucker. I used to be like, sometimes. Wait, wait. What, what, what are the signs of never like, oh. wanting to. Rubbing, rubbing, rubbing my knees. His yeah, rubbing knees. knees. <laughs> I, I could lie, yeah. And then, and then when his and eyes. I, and I have to like pinch and myself. So yeah. I'm like, all right, baby. Not <laughs> <laughs> like, and then his, uh, and then his eyes start fluttering. Yeah, man. Like yeah. He, this is kind of like. <laughs> it's like, like, it's like when is this shit gonna be? Oh, hold on, you would like knock out, like yeah. full on go to no, sleep. No, no, I would like, like try. No, I wouldn't fall. Asleep. I mean, I would be like, yo, I have to like do this. Like, I have to move around. I move my legs and rub my knees. Yeah, I used to do that a lot. He used to act like he was in jury duty, right? I used to do that. I used to do that a lot. I I don't do it as much. Not as much Yo, as you I remember used to when do. Scratch Bassett was like, "Hey, you awake over there?" No, but no that, that was me. me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was, I was like snoring or something. Right? Like, <laughs> I was breathing heavy. He thought I was snoring. Yeah. He's like, "You're, he's you're like, awake you over there? Like, you're right over there?" I was like Scratch Bassett. I was like, "Yo, I'm so embarrassed." I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> He was just too close to the mic. Yeah, and it, I just like had like a, a little light snore. <laughs> and there was his no, fucking but was piercing. Looking, you was and looking it was down. His yeah. In was, de- de- in de- defense, it was late that night. Yeah. It, it was, was like 11 30, 12 o'clock. I was oh, so embarrassed. We had double recording that day. Yeah. When I recall, I'm yeah, glad yeah. I never fessed up to falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. Or what, trying not to fall I mean, asleep. I was like trying to pinch myself. Like, oh, yo, I, I look at the watch. I'm like, yo, get it together now. This is motherfucker going to shut up of it. Can we end this episode? <laughs> Cause I asked, like, it was it it gets really cold in here. So the other day I was like, why is it cold? And like they're like, oh, it's so that never doesn't fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I seriously just make it cold so it never won't fall asleep. <laughs> Everybody brings. So what, what's different now? You're staying awake. That's no, no, changed. now I'm, I don't know. Now I'm just like whatever. It, <laughs> no, I'm like whatever. I'm, I'm used to it now. But yeah, the first couple of years, yeah, I'll be like. Dude, so sometimes were- them in the interviews, it'll be like kind of like, oh man, come on. Man. Let's wrap it up already. And I look at Jamie. I'm like, yo, come on, Jamie. I'm, I'm trying to talk to Jamie through the minds. Help he, me. He took quicker to wrap the shit. Up. Help me. We got enough info. There, there was a few times that Cricky would say, "Do we? Is that it, guys? You guys have any other questions? No, we'll be, no I think we're done." <laughs> yeah, I fucking hate it when Jamie tries to end the episode early. Uh, you know when you do that, right? I do that now. Yeah, like we'll you'll try to end the episode early with a guess, and I get so fucking heated sometimes. <laughs> oh, I never noticed. Because like, that. let's say the, the 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 guest is talking about like um, I don't know, like battle DJs, and you'd be like da 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 battle DJs, and then he'll try to end it and be like, oh, all right, thanks for coming. No, no, he'll thanks he'll say for- like. Well, I didn't know that about battle DJs. I guess uh, I guess we can move on, right, Chris? And or you'll see something like that, and I'd be like, "Yo, why are you?" I don't. I don't think I do that now. You don't do that now, but you no. do. But yeah, but I mean, I was learning. But yeah, there was times where he'll look at me. I'd be like, "Fuck!" <laughs> and then I and then I'll try to make it more like wake him up, and I'm like, "Jesus!" And I would look at him, and I would get I would get heated because I would see him like. <laughs> no, like the, the, the neck defense. will get weaker, his eyes will flutter. Like, yo, never's it's defense. like a robot, like malfunctioning. Uh, yeah. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a robot need yo. electricity. <laughs> like, and I'm just but like, yo, this first year two never was on a rampage. He was doing like club night and then day Ooh. club oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then night club and then. And he had this like back to back like five sets. He was like doing two a days. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. a days, and then the last one was like a like I remember that. I remember Still that coming time. evening to do the podcast. Yeah, yeah. in between yeah. them, that's when we was doing home. like two and a half, three hour episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like he would be going, he was at the pool, and then he'll come record, and then he'll go home for like an hour, and then go to the nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somehow Frank the Tank survived that shit. Frank so the Tank. Him falling asleep, kind of rubbing his knee, I would be like, "Yo, you here? Yeah, yeah. You, at least he's here. Physically, he made it. So." So exactly what's changed? <laughs> what? Well, I'm not doing as DJ as much as I was back then, so maybe that's why I'm awake now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, also like the when we first started recording, I wasn't talking much on the microphone. I would be like kind of quiet, whatever. Just yeah. Lay back. I say two, one or two things, but yeah, as the years go on and on, get you get a little bit more comfortable mm-hmm. with the mic. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to know how have you gone? <laughs> yeah, cooking. Go ahead. Cook it. Well, let's hear gone? from Jamie. Let's hear from Jamie. I mean, there's a lot of things, right? My DJ mm-hmm. career, for one, I wasn't as active as I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot. I've learned around from my peers, from you guys a lot. I build my own kind of style to it. So I see shit way differently than before. As a person, t- totally fucking different side of the spectrum. I was a kid back then. I was snobby. I was selfish. I was very, um, I know it all. It's my world type of shit. And now, you know, I'm more understanding. And I look at shit different. I work with people different. Different shit irritates me now, especially with timing. Like if, you, if you're running late and you don't tell me, you don't take consideration that I get tight for some reason. I learned that from Kirk because it's just disrespecting my time and the effort that I'm bringing into the table. Mm-hmm. So things like that. But um, as far as the DJ shit goes, yeah, I'm, you know, it's a, it's, fuck. I remember I used to pray for one gig a month. And now I got more than that and more than enough now. But it, it has come a long way from a lot of failures of trying to get more gigs, more gigs. Doing a lot of shit for free, you know, just putting in the work in the beginning. And now I'm appreciate where I am now. And it's different. My initial thoughts when I approached when I approached Jamie and Neva and D about this podcast was that there there is an age gap between all of us. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're all in different places in our career. And I really thought I was like everyone when we first had the podcast, they were like, Why the fuck is Jamie on? Why mm-hmm. the fuck is Jamie on? Like, your dude's not even a DJ. Why the fuck is he on? Why are you co-signing this? And I initially thought, I was like, yo, I think it'll be interesting to see his perspective as a dude entering nightlife industry, right, right. And, and DJing in nightclubs, exactly what his growth would be. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of thinking in a long run, like, what I, I want to see what happens in three years or two years and where he's going to be at and seeing in four years. And I'm actually glad I did that because it's like we're, we're seeing someone who had no gigs the first year, a couple of gigs the second year, third year was the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then now he's working fairly steadily. Right. And he's growing as a DJ a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've heard him open, right? Remember he opened uh, two years ago? Light. At light, yeah. At light. Mm-hmm. And it was. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you for you're here because he wanted me to talk about this. Go ahead, Craig. Remember he opened and you were like, yo, this motherfucker doesn't know how to play for girls. Mm-hmm. Like he was playing. Yeah. Well, I, he, yo, he denied this. Yo, and we, I, I brought I, this yeah. up. And we went to the history books. And I was like, yo, me and Neville were, Neville was laughing at, he was telling me later, we were laughing about it, that in your opening set, he was playing Tiger uh, Dope. Right? Right? Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Man, with the, with the, it was the deep cover beat, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was yeah. like, why the fuck would My you play that? Dope. Right? Uh-huh. And he's like, and I told him, and he's like, there's no way I would have played that. So I would have never played that. We opened that. my Serato, and we went back to that day. And he played that and song. And I played that song. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it was it was. But it, it was even back then. But you learn, man. You got to learn somehow, man. No, 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 yeah. No, yeah. It, it was, was just it a was funny a... moment because... In my, I, would, I would never play that. In my head, like, I didn't play it. And I was like, yo, like, let's put money. Let's put money on it. And, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> you might be right. He he wanted to kind of put money, but he was like, let me open, let me check. And then you, you yeah, and I said, and I saw it, and I was just like, oh shit, I did play that song towards the end. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, even that, like that shit was a nerve wracking moment for me. As much as, you know, I sucked that night, if I did, it was like big club. We had this big event, it's Neva's birthday. We put so much time and effort into promoting the neon party. Too short is fucking performing, so it was a lot. As even that, it, I was only DJing an hour for that. But even that, like I was just like, oh, I was so grateful for this fucking opportunity that I took hours to do the you know, to put prep. my set, yeah, yeah. to prep. That is nerve wracking. Little did I, yeah. you know, I didn't do. But you didn't know that at the time you got to DJ, DJ for the ladies, right? You was just yeah, like, because I was just like you oh. just wanted to kill that shit. Just, I was just like, <laughs> I'm gonna play whatever I'm gonna play. Yeah. And everybody, I didn't think everybody gonna rock with were, you. I didn't think people were gonna show up towards later, towards closer to whoever was after me. But no motherfucker showed up on time. And then I was like, "Holy that was shit!" That was a really good night. We had that was fun a big night. That was a night, fun yeah. night. That was a good night. I saw footage. And even yeah. that, like that night. Even now, like we put you know, my, you know my birthday party, Neva's birthday party, the Christmas party. We've done a lot of events. That I'm like, holy shit! This all came from this idea of doing a podcast. Mm-hmm. Just us talking on the microphones. Now people fly out to come hang out with us and shit like that. So 
that too. I'm very grateful over that too. But it it's, it was a, it was, you know, a slow beginning for me in the DJ career. Yeah. And then the pandemic just hit us over the head. And then even that, even during that time, I fucking questioned myself, questioned if I was like what we were doing. Should we just stop? You know, a lot of bullshit that we went through. Shit mentally behind the scenes that people would never know. Yeah. I would even add, like, for me personally, I felt like during the pandemic, because I wasn't really on Twitch, this platform kept me relevant Mm -hmm. to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't DJing. I wasn't really on Twitch. Never really felt comfortable. So, like, having this platform kept me in conversation with other people and kept me in contact with people through social media and different things. Because what else was I posting during that time, I didn't have gigs. Mm-hmm. I wasn't traveling anywhere. Mm-hmm. So my, I, I even looked back on my feet. I'm like, damn, everything was about the podcast in 2020. Yeah. That first, that first leg of 2020 was all <clears throat> social media feeds about the podcast. And if I didn't have that, my social media would have been dry. Yeah, and you know I, I mean? it's weird because like uh, our, uh, you know, our listenership went down mm-hmm. during the pandemic. It's because a lot of people were like watching YouTube. I mean, and watching Twitch, Netflix, Netflix and, and, yeah. sure, Twitch and other also. shit. Well, I mean, Twitch was one of them, but a lot of people were watching like Just home, right? streaming yeah. platforms. Mm-hmm. They, and yeah. I think you know, I, I, and when when they listen to podcasts, it's usually uh, it's usually commuting somewhere. Yeah, you know going to work or at yeah. work or gym. they're in the airport, they're in the plane, mm-hmm. they're in the gym. Yeah. And a whatever, lot of our listeners know? are DJs, and there, a lot of people got depressed during that time. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say like you want to at that time you want to take yourself away from reality. And you guys were so in reality. You know, you guys yeah. were talking about what was going on and like the uncertainty. And like, I mean, I'm really proud of you guys for sticking through it because it is really hard. Like, I don't think and everyone knows. Imagine doing something, a big project, like a fucking book report for a week for four years. You know, like yeah. it is a lot. You, it, you do realize that it's like, I guess here's a question. Being sure. behind the scenes now and when you weren't behind the scenes and now realizing the amount of work that's in it. No, no, I always knew. You always knew. I always knew it was a lot. That's why I was so surprised that you guys never took time off. Right. You know, because I I understand, like, the work it takes. Um, especially, like, I mean, I guess the thing I didn't think about was the video aspect. Like, I didn't know you guys, like, videoed everything, which is, like, twice the amount of work, mm-hmm. you know, as it is to produce a show. Yeah. So that was, like, crazy to me. But I'm proud of you guys for sticking through it and... I mean, you guys won an award for it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Which, we never, which we never received. Las Vegas Weekly. Shout they, out. You know, they Where's throw a party. Plaque? I'm going to make sure you guys get we need our plaque. go to the yeah. next party. There's, yeah. no, yeah. there's no plaque, fellas. There's no plaque. Don't no put plaque. it up right behind Cricket on the wall. <laughs> that was, it was a good week of social media content. <laughs> <laughs> we got a good week of social that's media content. That's, that's all that was. But the, you know, thank you, Las Vegas Weekly. Yeah. Shout out. Either way. Hopefully we can come back next year and win it again. Well, yeah. one, one of the main things that you also learned that you were talking to me about is the community of DJs. Right? Oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, this past week, I had to do a, a private event. I had to do a Friendsgiving. And I needed uh, speakers and lights. And I needed help with my 70s crate. So I put out um, on, Insta- on Twitter, I put out, does anybody have speakers or lights that I can rent out? for this day in LA and within I think two minutes I have both things covered. Mm-hmm. C Flow hit me up with the speakers and my boy DJ Rello, he had the uh he had the lights. So after I got that covered, um all I needed was a seventies crate. And then I was gonna hit up Kirk but he was uh I had fucked up because I, I lost time management. I was supposed to get with him to to help me get that set together. And then I, I was gonna hit up Nev but it was too late. Like yeah, I'm was, hurt that you didn't hit me up. It was, it was like the I day mean, never, of never '70s crate as as I two two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, no. okay, all right. No, but he's right though yeah. because when I would crash on Nevers and he would do his streams, I would listen to all his great I mean, music. He's he the playing. person to go to for that. Shit. Yeah, yeah, and he had all these great sets that he would put on, and it was discos yeah, yeah. and it was all this shit. You were absorbing all that. You no, yeah. So know. all those mm. things I put, you know, I put that in the crate, but I needed more of the shit that I don't know. So then I hit up um, Stone Rock, DJ Stone Rock, which is one of our, you know, we had him on here a few times. But he's, over the years, you know, quietly, he's become one of my good friends and a mentor outside of you guys as well. So I hit him up, and I, we went, I went to his crib, we hung out, and he gave me all the shit that I needed. And it was probably, like, the best set of 70s you can just, you know, kind of put somebody on. Because I ended up doing, I think, two to three hours with just 70s music for that party. Then I switched it up to hip hop or some shit because they, when people were arriving, they were like suited and booted. 
So they wanted the music to kind of fail till they got drunk and then they wanted hip hop. But it, it, it just that it took a village to do that one fucking event. And that was amazing that people looked out for me. And I was like, oh shit, you know, I broke them off with some bread and stuff like that. But it's just like people tend to forget and they try to set, make it seem like they did it themselves to make it happen. Nothing could ever be done by themselves. Like, I needed three people and myself to do a four-hour event, a Friendsgiving, you know? And shout-outs to those guys, c Flow, DJ Rello, and Stone Rock for helping me, you know, fulfill that night for those people. And then, and you know to pass that, yeah, pay you that forward. Yeah, yeah, pay yeah. that forward. In the future. And then yeah. I, I called you, and I was like, dude, I'm so fucking grateful. Like, that was a moment of just... And it's funny, Thanksgiving's around the corner. But it just being grateful for motherfuckers just... With open arms, because there's good dudes that embracing yeah. they, they willing to do that. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, dude, like C-Flo, like uh, C-Flo, Stone Rock. Yeah, yo, I remember, like, yo, yeah. like every a lot of people have helped them. They look out for people. That's yeah. and that's the thing that motherfuckers don't understand with DJing. Like, I feel like some of the some of your thinking earlier when we were working together was like, like I don't want Crooked's help. I want to do this all by myself. Yeah, I didn't I, you know? Not, I don't want this person. It's like a pride thing. Yeah. I don't want to show that I'm weak. I'm not gonna ask for help. Like I gotta do it. I gotta you know? do it. But it, it, and I'm, sometimes I'm just kind of like, yo, why aren't you asking? Like, it's very rare for him to come to me to, for music or come to never for music. And I'm like, why aren't you utilizing the people around you? Yeah, for, yeah. to make you better. Yeah. And it's like this pride thing that you know everything, yeah. and it's like you can't navigate through life or. Or even a career that way, you have to ask motherfuckers for help. Yeah, the yeah. research. That's the, that's the missing piece. And it is, you have to appreciate the help. Yeah. That's yeah. the important yeah, thing. Yeah. And that's the one thing I don't like about motherfuckers who come on the show or who talk to me. And they, they, they're they like, yo, I killed it last night. I did this or I did this and I did this and I did this. I'm like, yo, but who helped you? Because someone helped you. Right. Someone who, who hooked you up. Or who like, I always give props to somebody Cause someone helped me or like someone gave me an idea or I was having a conversation with them and they planted the seed for something for us to talk about it here. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like you always have to give props to somebody. And I hate fucking on Twitter when people, I I don't even want to go into this. I know know what you're going, I know what you're going, but uh, circling back is like people think, yo, it looks better if the story's Yo, I did it by myself. Yeah. 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 But that's not cool. There's not even there's to be no... honest, like Jamie helped me tremendously this past week, man. Like I had to do a gig in Arizona. It was a fight, but it was probably ninety five percent Latino. Ninety Mexican, just straight Mexican. So I hit him up, I was like, Hey man, like I know reggaeton. I don't know traditional Mexican music. Mm-hmm. I p- please like just put me something together right. to help me out. He broke down three different folders and every one of those folders was man, just I had a great set. I had a great night, and I hit him up. I was like, hey, man, like, everything you gave me was a hit. Like, thank you, because no, I wouldn't have survived without that shit. You know what J- I mean? Jamie did the same for me when I DJed in Dallas. I needed some Mexican and Spanish music. Gave me, like, a three folders of music that helped me out that day. Yeah. That night. I even told him, yo, I, I still owe you a steak yeah, dinner. Yeah, he's saying, I'm a steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that's the thing, like. Where's that steak dinner? I don't know. <laughs> you never, I, mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go still, pick him up. Exactly. I gotta you make still, the time. I gotta make the effort. Hopefully you're his secret Santa, so yeah. then he could give you Jesus. the steak dinner for. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but, is, is that the segue? <laughs> 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 nah, ra- 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 wrapping it up, it's just, man, just be grateful for the people around you. Be grateful for your team. Well, it's a community, right? It's like Bonnie community. said, it's really, really a community. It's like you it's a give. It's culture. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, just take. Saying. You have to give. And yeah. you have yeah. to. Like, motherfuckers got to give props to people without having it be a look. Right. Mm-hmm. And I really hate that right now with social media. It's like no one wants to give props unless there's a look attached to it. Yeah. yeah. Meaning, like, I ain't going to give. I ain't going to shout out C-Flow, but I will shout out meeting Jazzy Jeff. Even though Jazzy <laughs> Jeff <laughs> never right. helped me, it's a look for me to <laughs> shout him out. To post a picture and say like I had a five minute conversation with him and he, and that five minute conversation changed my life. Yeah. When there's all these motherfuckers around the motherfucker that helped him and shaped the motherfucker's career, but they ain't gonna shout that those motherfuckers because yeah. it's not a look. Right. You you understand yeah. what I mean? No, it's so funny because when I first got started a couple of years ago, like I was like, why do DJs only like hang out with so many DJs? You know. And then it's funny because when I got fired from the station. Like, I had barely started DJing. Like, I had, like, just, like, some commercial shit, 
you know? And then I met Scylla um, and like getting fired is like the worst shit ever, but it, it happens to everyone in radio. Like there's a joke. You don't work in radio unless you get fired, you know? Mm-hmm. And so um, when I met her the day after I got fired, I was like, yo, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Like I have to move to a new city, do radio somewhere else, you know, like what, what am I going to do? And I met her and she put me in contact, like without me even asking, she's like, I fucking got you. She put me in contact with three people that paid my bills for the rest of the summer. Like, and that's so crazy. Cause like, I didn't even know her, you know, like someone didn't owe me shit. And I'm just like, Oh, this is why like DJs hang out with DJs. You know, it's just like the connections, but it's just yeah. like, people you know and it's just like it didn't need to you know i don't know i guess when i think about that now like one day i hope to put someone on like that because like she like paid my bills for like months you know off of those three people wow what did those three people they just gave you money or they gave you gigs, gigs <laughs> they gave me gigs. okay <laughs> i was gonna make a jerk too but i was just kind of like can't do it can't do it can't do it she was no, just like three, like three motherfuckers <laughs> gave me money i was like no for, like, for, for what, what? Look, <laughs> what'd you do three, they, they had they had uh they, you do to get that they money? were small like event agencies you know okay. they wasn't it wasn't a cool look but <laughs> i was, you guys I was just let that shit go. very commercial you know like cute little shit i can't i can't have a conversation be like three motherfuckers gave me money you gonna no. be like what well, did no, you do she connected me with three people and so they, they gave, you, they gave me money dj yeah. agencies no, that okay paid if i need to clarify thank you for introducing me to these months did they pay my bills well, what'd you do yeah. what? <laughs> Yo, so i was carrying speakers i was setting up like i was djing so there is that the clarification uh, yeah. no that was good but now yeah, it's dope to see. It's dope to see. <laughs> it was funny though, because I was thinking the same thing. Were you thinking like, the same thing? You said, I thought the same thing. I knew shit. what it was, but I feel like the listener may not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I need to be more specific. I need a clarification. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what the I'm I'm eye to eye with the listeners. I need a clarification. <laughs> um, all right. I well What about you? What about you? <sighs> Here we go. How have I changed in the last four years? Mm-hmm. Uh fuck, I mean a lot. I feel like I've cha- I've I've shared how I've changed. I mean, I've I've you I've, have I've shared a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go through all of that. Oh, I mean, I would I would say that. Um, Let's start off as a person. Oh my god! Not even as a DJ. Let's start off as a person. Give me the top three things. <laughs> just, nah, okay, chill. No, Cricket has come a long way. It's funny because I've listened to past episodes. Yeah, and like he was not as sure of himself, you know, because like. As a personality, you grow into that, and it takes a lot of time to develop and be comfortable in front of the mic, you know? And so, listening back then, like, he was a little bit more, like, shy. You were a little bit, like, like more uncertain. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like now, like, you definitely know your voice, you know? And, like, you know your role. Just like everyone else has figured out their role, like, you really understand your role in the podcast. I feel like I, I know I've changed. I, I just don't think, uh, I don't know. I can't, Collectively, I can't put it all together. But I know I've changed. Like, I feel like um, I'm just more aware of, like, I'm, uh, no, let me put it this way. I, I'm in more control of how I react to shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I realize... Like I, if if I control anything, I control my reaction to shit, and mm-hmm. that's really to me the most Im- important thing that I've learned and navigated. I can't blame motherfuckers, I can't hate on motherfuckers for who they are. Right. I can only control how I am around them, and how much of um yourself, how much I allow of myself to be accessible to them. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't really hate on motherfucker. Like, yo, that's an evil-ass motherfucker. Like, fuck him. I used to be like, yo, fuck him. Like, now I'm just kind of like, yo, he's doing what he needs to do. I don't move like that, but I'm not going to hate on him for moving like that. That's just I, that's not got nothing yeah. to do with the podcast, though. Well, it's a, as a person. Actually, it kind of does, though. <laughs> I know. We talk about the podcast. <laughs> no, but that's, I said, I as mean, a person. As a person. Yeah, as a person, no, I think, I, yeah, I've, I've learned to control I spoke about how, Yeah, as a yeah. person, how i grown. Yeah. Yeah. But you did say like you even in the com- I hate I hate that we keep talking about Lavo, but you did tell me in that conversation like you're like if this had been like 4 or 5 years ago, 
like I wouldn't want to work with you anymore. You're not. I would like, cut it off. Yeah, yeah. you're like mm-hmm. I would have just like this. This would have been like dead. You know. Yeah, yeah. But no, like I'm, I see, I see all sides now. If that makes any sense, yeah. and I think that's what you know. When you get older, I feel like all you're doing is you're moving back, and your perspective is like zooming growing out. wider, zooming out, and it's, yeah. you're zooming out more, and you're seeing the big picture. You know, when you're young, you see you really you're too close to shit. Mm-hmm. You don't see the big picture, and I think as I'm getting older, I'm seeing the big picture. Yeah, yeah I'm seeing all sides. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing all the moving parts. You know, and, and it's to the point where it's like it's weird because as you get old, as I'm getting older, it's like I don't I, I'm not like a fortune teller, but I can I can estimate and guesstimate like all the potential outcomes for the decisions I make every day. And it affects every decision I make. It affects the direction of where this podcast goes. It, it affects the decision of where my DJ career goes or my consulting, or all of these other things, all these things that come to play, I can see it and I can like guesstimate where it's going to go and like, and exactly what kind of decision I, I need to make if it turns left in t- 2023 and if it turns right in 2024. And that's really, it's, it's kind of ill, like on a business standpoint of looking at shit like that. Yeah. But I, I think also just managing, I think with the podcast itself, like, I don't know about my voice and everything like that, but I th- I feel like managing all of you guys, I I've maybe grown a little more accustomed to it. Where yeah. you know what I'm saying, where I'm not trying to force anyone to be more than they are, mm-hmm. or change anybody, and I'm I'm more about adapting the business to the people now. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, yeah, it does. It makes sense. I feel like in this day and age, and I, I talk to a lot of business owners, you cannot force people. To adapt to your business, you have to change their business to adapt to the people. And everyone's like, yo, like, uh, you know, like I, I talked to a lot of my boys in retail, like, oh, you can't train these motherfuckers. Like, yo, these, these kids nowadays, they don't want to work. They don't want to. And I'm like, yo, we all know the problems. What we need to do is adapt the business to the workers. You know, like mm-hmm. the structure that you had 10 years ago, it's not going to work now. It's not going to actually you got to change it every year. Because yeah. shit changes. It moves so fast every year. So you have to adapt. So, I mean, I'm, I'm learning to adapt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I mean, in a long story short. But that's... I do think it's crazy that you, like... I wanted to make a compilation of you, like, a foreboding something horrible happening in 2020. Because, <laughs> like, mean, I yeah, think for, I, like, years, you're like, oh, yo, in 2020, shit's going down. In 2020, shit's going down. I mean, yeah, every election year, some shit's going to go down. And yeah, I think but 20, like I real, think, it really, yeah. really went down. Nah, you, <laughs> you, you hit that one in the button. Bro. I know, like you were a fortune think, teller over here. Well, I, I think 2024 is going to be horrific. What? <laughs> Crooked, <laughs> Crooked, Crooked, don't throw that out there. No, I'm telling you right now, I think 2024 is going to be horrific. It's going to be worse than it was 2020. 2020, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> think COVID is going to happen again. I don't think there's going to be, I think the, I don't think the pandemic is going to come to play, but everything that exploded last year in 2020, it has not been addressed, and I, I don't know if it's going to be. Um, I don't think any. I don't know what kind of progression the country is going to have in the next two years. Mm-hmm. But my thinking is, there's a lot of fucking weird, unstable motherfuckers that are learning from last year, and they're planning to be more prepared well, in 2024. 2024. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then a lot of motherfuckers are not preparing for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So who are the motherfuckers who are preparing, and who are the motherfuckers who aren't preparing? Yeah, Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? I think the crazier motherfuckers are preparing, and yeah. the normal people are just kind of going on with they're life happy, like it's happy okay. That Trump is not in office no more. They yeah, think, but I think they're gonna get back to normal. I think there's, you know, which is not I think there's a now. bunch of motherfuckers underground working on shit, planning, and ready to fucking infiltrate and mobilize in 2024. And nobody, and I hope motherfuckers are ready. Nobody's prepared because I think regular people gonna aren't gonna be ready. They're gonna mm-hmm. get distracted with social media and everything else that's going on in life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it's, I think some shit's gonna explode in 2024. And I, you know what? I'll gladly be wrong. I'll hopefully, I, yeah. <laughs> if I'm wrong, that's dope. If it's uh, like you the, weren't wrong last time. If it's the dopest year ever, I'm just be like, yo, crook. You was, I was like, yo, you was wrong. We're having a dope year. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think so. All right, so like moving forward, so we're like we should talk about this holiday episode that Nudia wants to plan, right? Yeah, she yes. wants to. We're doing a together. Christmas yeah, yeah. party. Christmas party, nice. Well, like we got to represent everything. We got to represent Kwanzaa. 
Chanaka, right? Three Kings Day. Yes. So I we, can do, we do, I can do Kwanzaa. You do Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. You do yeah. Three Kings Day. We'll, we'll, we'll do, do Hanukkah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to wear a yarmulke. <laughs> I don't care. No, no, but we'll do a, we're doing this holiday party. Yeah. You you presented, you proposed this idea to us. I yes. did. I, was, I think we should do a Secret Santa. Yeah. And, and, then, you, and what I love about this idea is that if it sucks, it's your fault. It's yes. all your fault. <laughs> it's not, don't, I don't take be, any blame for this. I'd be like, Nudia planned this whole shit. It's great. I have great ideas. Okay. So we're going to do a Secret Santa. Yeah. We are. And we're going to do a minimum. I said, like, I don't want this $50 Secret Santa. No. I want, I, want to, I want to price this up. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do a $150 minimum. Minimum. Minimum $150. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. $150. <laughs> Never no, wanted to do 500 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. Oh, that's yeah. Ooh. Come on, man. I'll tell you, that's a good. Never, never. If you could pick the dollar amount, it would be like twelve ninety five. Right? <laughs> it would be to twenty bucks, <laughs> a three piece. <laughs> a little, little something. Never say he'll give me a I'll, gap. I'll, a uh, sweater. Get you a gap. Yeah, gap, we're gap 50 bucks. <laughs> Never. Get you a, a coupon for um, <laughs> Fuku Burger. <laughs> Never. I have a question. What's up? Were you always this cheap, or did you steadily you know get more cheap you as you got older? Cheap? The older I've gotten, the more cheaper I've become. Well, yeah. Why is that? Why I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hey. Is it like some, some screwed shit? What is know. it? I don't know, man. He's like the dad from my, everyone hates Chris. <laughs> you should see his face when we had the meeting, and I was like, $150 minimum? This dude was like, oh. <laughs> like, we just told him to run a it was like It was like I stole, mm. like I stole, <laughs> to the like guy. it's like I stole something nah, from you, right? Already. Nah, I mean. I mean it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> do there. I blame you. <laughs> All right, so let's do the secret Santa. We're gonna do this. Yes. yes. So okay. never. So pass around the and hat. Of course, I get the. Um, no, no. She starts. Go ahead. And then we don't say. Who no, it you is. don't. You don't say well, who you no, get. Say who you yeah. got. Keep it secret. But it's if it's yourself, it's if yourself. Yeah. You can't. You can't. Oh, Nudia, open yourself. yours up. Make sure yours is not yours. Oh, you're right. Never make sure <laughs> you is not. not you. He's upset. Look at his face. <laughs> Is she really upset? Are you? All right, we got D. D's checking. Nah. I'm joking with you. All right, I'm going to take one. And you're going to take the last one. I'll take the last one. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Good. I, I like my selection. I right, said, so then we're going to film this holiday party, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we invite people? That would be dope. We told Bonnie to come through. I mean, yeah, a couple of guests. Invite, so few, we're gonna a have a people. A, we're gonna have it at? a live audience. Can we have it at the um the conference room? Yeah, we can do it at the conference room. We can invite like maybe twenty people, ten people. That's too much. Yeah, right? ten. Like He's still scared of the pandemic. I'll say five. Ten, to, five ten, to ten, ten people. people and like ten, ten. rhino strippers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Christmas. I like, like that, man. Yeah, you know? have them dress up as the, elves. The, the road elves, yeah. Ooh. The road, the road podcast. <laughs> now elves. he's here. Now, now you're okay. I like that, man. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> he was a All rhino right. bucks. Now we could, oh, we could just have it at Rhino. Yeah, maybe. we just have it at Rhino. Oh, wow, in the back fun. room. Oh, in the fine. back room. In the Drake room. Mm. In the Drake room. We could have <laughs> yeah. our Christmas I party us at the Drake room. I wanted to be in Christmas pajamas, but. Um, <laughs> Hey, yo. You're pushing it, yeah. Nidia. Come on. I think. Why do you have like some nightgown you want to wear <laughs> no. or some shit? <laughs> no, I just thought it'd be cute. We're doing Secret Santas. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> uh, yo, before we end this though, I gotta give a big shout out. So this is a weird situation. Some uh, a, a dude had a wedding, and uh -huh. he had a DJ mm -hmm. DJ his wedding, mm -hmm. and I guess one of the factors of paying him was that he would get a shout on on a road podcast. Oh shit! Oh, wow. Or maybe Damn, he man. got a discount. This is an NFT he, now. Maybe he discounted the DJ. Was like, I get you a, a, a real podcast shout, shout out. out. Really? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can add Yo. your ad right here. Just hit up Kirk here. Yo, on so, so this is a shout out to DJ Vertigo, right? Vertigo. Vertigo. Someone's um, dizzy. Someone's who dizzy. did Sean and Laura's wedding? And Vertigo, you killed it. You did a great. You did a great job. They wrote me a script, which I'm not gonna write, but read. read. Okay, I, they wrote a script which I'm gonna try to read, but it's it looks pretty horrific. We heard you put on a banger show for Sean and Laura's wedding, <laughs> Mr. Vertigo, uh, in Ottawa, Canada. Your cuts were like hot knife through butter. Oof. Ooh. Sean told us you're a big Ooh. fan of the podcast, so we just wanted to say what's up to a fellow working DJ and thank you for listening, DJ Vertigo. Great job, motherfuckers. Uh, Got Vertigo. Man. And uh, oh, cool, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yes. you seem too confused. 
great read, Kurt. Dude. Great read. I don't know. Banger said. I should have charged something. I'm about yeah, to, say, yeah, yeah. I'm about to ask you, did you get some money? Yeah, who this? is this? That was an ad. I don't know. <laughs> you know how these said. work? The banger <laughs> said. Hot like butter. For the Hot f- like butter. <laughs> Hot that's like the name of this butter. episode. Hot like butter. Uh, what do you call it? I guess that's four years, right? Yeah, four man. years. Aww. We're definitely not going to do this on our five year anniversary. No, we got to go back big, big. We got to do yeah. something else on our five Major. year anniversary. Major. Yeah. Sure. Big yes. Congrats, but no. guys. Thank but yo, thank you. seriously, man, like, uh, I, I, we really got to thank some of these list, a lot of these listeners yeah, yeah, for yeah, listening yeah, to yeah. us for four, four years. years. I really don't know how they Feedback, do Feedback, everything. <laughs> and they yeah. keep growing. By the masses I'm shocked though And you know what I'm saying Like we really really Appreciate that shit Yeah and, um, Definitely And yeah man And uh Thanks guys no. It's been a pleasure It's, it's been, been great yeah, I'm grateful yeah. for you Hope we can do yeah, Four man. more years Yeah we just Continue Hopefully. to get better man Yeah Maybe get paid yeah. <laughs> A little bit more <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just putting out there In the universe <laughs> I need a raise. You better, you better we are getting you. paid, but you pay I say, a little more. I say a little better, yeah. A little more better. Yeah. A little more better. <laughs> more better. A little more better. I hope okay. we start bringing free more better, ads over more here. Better, more better, more better. All right, Jesus. All right, man. Peace. All right, okay, peace. Bye. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace. Thank you.